Hi, we're thrilled to share another update on ScienceLogic's automation engine for AI ops. Today we're going to talk about Cloud Sprawl. And foundationally, this is one of the perfect examples of how ScienceLogic takes data from a variety of data sources, from cloud, log, applications, infrastructure, network, brings all that data into a data lake using a variety of techniques that allow us to then apply context on that data to drive AI-assisted automations. So today joining me again is John Wilsey, our senior solutions Thank architect. You, and we're going to focus in on the challenges of cloud sprawl. Now, most organizations have been looking at cloud for a number of years now. And what's happened, what we're seeing and hearing from our customers is that they're uh, faced with the fact that people are spinning up resources in the cloud without IT's knowledge. And what that ultimately turns into is people are actually paying huge bills for resources that they don't even know they have, they don't know if they're being used or not, and they're, they're not sure who to bill them to, especially if they have a, a billing system in place. So, John, you know, can you share a little bit about how we can help organizations control or tame that, that sprawl that they've got in their environment? We can monitor the cloud in real time mm -hmm. and we can detect when resources are spun up by different users. We can actually go ahead with our automations, mm -hmm. put controls in where a policy can be set by the IT department and if people spin up resources without following that policy, we're able to detect that when we okay. see a system come up Mm -hmm. And we can essentially make two choices. We can say, ah, they're following the policy, everything's good, right. and we know that belongs to marketing, and there we go. Or, with, hey, Josh spun this thing up, he didn't have permission, okay. it's a really expensive system that he just spun up in the cloud. Since he wasn't following procedures, the system can automatically detect that and go ahead and shut it down automatically to control costs. Well, I wouldn't want to be Josh. Well, <laughs> so why don't you, uh, you know, show us what that looks like uh, in, in the product here. Certainly. So here we have a dashboard that is looking at a lot of different data that's coming in. And this data is coming in from both the Amazon uh, Cloud Service API that we're talking to, okay. as well as coming off of CloudTrail being pulled into and analyzed through Elk. We're actually looking at all these different data sources to build this dashboard. And what the dashboard represents is across the top, we're looking at the number of EC2s that were started, stopped, terminated, which you can see is in red here. The others are in green as you go across. Um, but these are different metrics, essentially analyzing what is being turned on, what is being turned off, by what methods. And then there's also who did it and what region they did it. Yeah. So we can understand, for instance, if we start to see a maybe a violator. Um, mm -hmm. That could be a person did it, or maybe it could be an automated script that is okay. spinning things up automatically that someone doesn't realize. Okay. So here what we can see is that we have a issue out here in the Northern California US West region, and we can see on which days were these different systems shut down? How many? Who did them? And there's essentially different graphs here that let us slice and dice the data in different ways. So this could be really useful, for example, if somebody spun things up for a project and maybe forgot that they were out there, and or maybe they left the company and they were using those resources before, I would think. Yep, we can look at who's using it, where they're using it, and also on the other dashboard, you know, what different size of resources are there, uh, those sorts of things. So capacity planning will tie into it as well. Mm -hmm. And we'll show that on one of the uh, screens coming up in a moment. Okay, and I would think, you know, for cost purposes, it sounds like, you know, by being able to identify who did it and, and associate it with a department, you'd be able to do a better job of, of billing uh, for those cloud services, so IT's not stuck with the bill yeah. all by themselves, right? I'm sure, in every company, if the, if the line of business manager didn't have to pay for their resources, they'd be really happy. Oh, um, yeah. But, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this helps IT keep control of that situation. Yeah. Uh, so let me go ahead next, and I will jump over to what happens from a policy control point of view. Okay. All right, so from a policy control point of view, most of the excitement actually happens automatically. Uh, the system right. itself takes care of it. From a visualization perspective and a notification perspective, what we do is when we detect that a new resource has been spun up, we create what we call an event. Mm 
An event can be a notification message, uh, mm -hmm. such as the one on the bottom here, that is essentially telling us that it was spun up and it was spun up correctly uh, based on, on the message that is communicated. And that's up and running. We also can have the opposite, which is a resource was spun up, it didn't meet the policies that were in place, so an automation doing remediation was kicked off that went ahead and shut down the instance. Okay. So for instance, here we have an event that fired. It opened up a external ticket for the, in the CMDB incident management system, telling the line of business manager that that resource was shut down automatically. Okay. Uh, and this is a great way for IT to make sure that someone doesn't spin something up or there might be an automation out there that does an auto scale for things that weren't permitted and suddenly there could be you know, tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. worth of, of mm -hmm. bills that no one was expecting or is even aware that it was running. Right, so this could actually tie in to like your change management or configuration management policies that are in place in the organization. Certainly. And we've talked about being able to show you know, what's being consumed, what's being shut down, what policies are there, what else could you do? So another thing you can do with this data of who's using which resources where, and as well, we can tie that to the performance data of those resources. It helps people, probably a system analyst role, be able to look at the resources that are out there and kind of right size their environment. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you a dashboard that uh, okay. an analyst might use for doing such a thing. Okay, great. All right, so in this view, we have a number of different graphs. Uh, the upper graph here, this is actually looking at resources over the last month or 30, 60, 90 days of what resources are in use. And here I'm looking actually for the lowest utilized resources. Uh, so here we see the utilization is very, very small, like less than well under 1% mm -hmm. utilization. Uh, and the other day we were actually in here, we noticed that there were some medium and large servers that has been spun up mm -hmm. and they've been sitting for well over 30 days at less than 1% utilization. Wow. So from a cost perspective, that doesn't make a lot of sense, nope. right? What's, if we have something that's very, you know, we're using very little resources on it, let's use the smallest possible server instance we can for that. Uh, another thing we can notice is there's, you know, lots of different micros that are spun up. Instead of maybe one application running on each micro instance, we might want to combine them and say, well, instead of having 30 instances running one thing each, why don't we make two or three running 10 each and get a lot more bang for our buck by consolidating some of those resources. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, we can look at what resources are overutilized. Uh, in this graph down here, for instance, we have a micro instance that's sitting at sustained 49% utilization mm -hmm. for over a month. Yeah. So in that case, it might make sense, you know, why don't we go ahead and move that up to a medium size instance and maybe that medium sized instance will be running more in the optimal CPU range. We want to have things maybe right. running in a 30 to 40% range. So we'll bump that up. So it's not only consolidating resources, but it's also can be used to analyze and, and right size the resources so you don't run out of capacity as well. Right. Right. Yeah, this is all, all incredibly useful. So now I, I noticed that uh, you're talking primarily about AWS, but mm -hmm. I would imagine that, you know, um, there are many companies, you know, that are using multiple clouds out yes. there. So does, you know, ScienceLogic support all these different clouds? Or? Yeah, so the most popular are going to be Amazon, uh, the Azure's, maybe SoftLayer. Uh, those are typically the, the most popular ones that we see. Okay, all right, great. So you basically have visibility across all these different clouds. You can understand what's being used, who's using it, where they're using it, and if they're not following policies. Okay. Sounds pretty awesome to me. So, well, thank you, John, appreciate your time. And if somebody wants to hear more or learn more about ScienceLogic, um, where should they go to find out? Just go to sciencelogic.com. All right, great. Thanks, John. Thank you.